Today we're setting our sights on St. Frangelico Cathedral. Start by returning to the center of Benigni Works Stargazer. Head through the door and descend the ladder. Watch for the explosive barrel ahead. It detonates on impact. Move carefully past it and pick up the fire canister on the ground. Continue through the red pipe emerging on the other side. Here, three worker puppets linger in the water. Deal with them. And collect the fragment by the nearby box on the right. Enter the mine shaft and take down the worker puppet sleeping behind the mine cart. As you approach the item near the mine cart, be prepared for an ambush by another worker puppet on the right. Use the nearby barrels to blow up the puppets. Finish off the remaining worker puppet and collect Jiminy's iron protection. Then follow the mine railway into a large cavern with upper and lower levels on opposite sides. Watch for a worker puppet hiding behind the wall near the ladder. Take him out before proceeding and there will be two worker puppets throwing thermite at you from the other side. I'll dispatch of them by using throwables myself. Collect the dim ergo fragment in the corner then cross the narrow walkway. Clamp the ladder to your right at the top, two worker puppets are waiting for us. Oh no, ah! Oh, this was supposed to work! Oh my gosh. Then climb the ladder back up to the upper level. Open the chest to obtain the big pipe wrench. Damn, okay. Damn, okay. It's a motivity weapon. At last, we have found a motivity weapon. Head back down and check behind the box directly ahead to pick up a special purification ampule. Next, we will explore the lower section of the cavern. Accessible via any of the ladders. I'll go for a falling strike though. Down here, we'll encounter three more puppets and find a hidden moonstone near an explosive barrel. Once this area is cleared, approach the item on the opposite side of the minecart tracks. A worker puppet will break through the wooden planks to ambush us. After defeating it, collect the vivid ergo fragment from the ground and proceed through the passage it created. At the end, we'll come across the dark moonstone of the covenant. Exit the passage and turn left to move forward. Before we can proceed, a large fire puppet blocks our path ahead. Defeat it to claim the carrier's amulet. Which increases weight limit, so I will be equipping that. Head onward to exit the mines and arrive at Moonlight Town. Activate the Moonlight Town Stargazer and begin heading up the slope. Gemini will comment on the scattered corpses as we make our way uphill. Enter the building on the left where a worker puppet waits around the corner. Defeat it, then exit through the opening in the wall and follow the cliff path to collect an attribute resistance ampule. Returning to the main path, we'll encounter a worker puppet near a well. This puppet is a setup for an ambush. Take out the grenade puppet on the roof ahead if you have any throwables to your disposal. Approaching the well, two more worker puppets will break through the planks from the nearby building, as well as another one charging towards you from the right.
collect the thermite from the building, the worker puppet burst through and the saw blade from the well. Then proceed toward the bridge, which will collapse halfway across, dropping us into the ravine below. After landing, pick up the resplendent ergo fragment and continue forward, passing a couple of explosive barrels. Two dimensional butterflies will appear, each dropping a crescent moonstone upon defeat. Follow the path until you reach an underground area, then turn left. Here you'll find the Moonlight Town Guide on a tombstone. Exit the tomb and head up the slope to the left, climbing the ladder to reach the other side of town. The hut to the left houses two worker puppets. Deal with them, then make sure to dispatch the one near the bridge. Continue along the path and up the steps. The building ahead contains several puppets and it's designed as a trap. The gate will slam shut as soon as we step inside, locking us in with multiple enemies. Enter with caution and prepare for a challenging fight. After clearing the room, grab the star fragment, then open the chest to collect the Workshop Union Standard Corrosion Resistance Converter. Run back to the opposite side and head through the opening in the wall to find a saw blade before activating the lever to lower the gate beside you, opening up an exit out of the building. Outside, head up the graveyard toward the stairs and examine the gravestones on the left to find a dim ergo fragment. Continue toward the cable car where you'll encounter a new stalker. She warns us about the dangers of the cathedral, saying the path is restricted to stalkers only. But the train isn't in service anymore. If you're determined to pass, you must prove your identity. To pass peacefully, choose to lie using the stalker's greeting and receiving a humanity boost. If you're stubborn, however, and decide to do nothing, the atoned will fight you. I thought all the stalkers died when the world... Please be safe up there. We'll return later to challenge the atoned. For now, let us use the cable railway key and get out of here. During the ride up, Gemini will begin a monologue which can't be skipped, so we'll have to sit through it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Pilgrim's Cable Railway. You, uh, you look annoyed. What I do... Ah, I'm sure After fine. stepping up the cable car, Gemini down. will comment on a new type of enemy. Something's off. Do you see that over there? What is that? But before progressing, Activate the stargazer and check to the right of it for a vivid ergo fragment. Then head toward the open gate where brief cutscene will introduce us to a new enemy. Um, no idea what those things are, pal. Approach with caution. The carcass is a surprisingly fast enemy sprinting towards us until it closes the distance. Quick strikes can interrupt their attack and they're particularly weak to fire, making weapons like the salamander dagger especially effective. Once you're dealt with the enemy, proceed through the doorway and enter the shack at the turn to find a hidden moonstone. Continue forward to a fork in the path. There will be another carcass to defeat it before going up the steps. Ignore the riverbed on the right for now. Here two carcasses await. After defeating them, check the building on the left to find the Vignini's urgent repair tool. Exit the building 
and pick up the Radiant Ergo Fragment from the bridge to the left. You'll find two more carcasses here, but beware, the wooden planks on the bridge ahead will collapse if stepped on, resulting in an ambush. To avoid this, backtrack to the riverside and take that path instead. Follow the river to the other side of the broken bridge, dealing with any carcasses along the way. Keep an eye out for a carcass standing to the right as we approach the far end of the bridge. When Saint Frangelico falls and breathes his last breath, the angels of God will look after him. Head through the nearby gate with three more carcasses await. What is eyes of yours open. Behind the crates near the stone wall we'll find a sawtooth wheel. Continue up the slope and enter the chapel ahead. Near the altar we can pick up an item called woman's prayer. Pray, you who are exhausted and injured. Remember the statue of the one-winged angel as we will return here later. For now, check the left-hand corner for a fire abrasive before exiting the chapel on the opposite direction. Proceed along the path until you encounter a new NPC near a hatless angel statue. Talk to the NPC who will introduce himself as Giangio to us. My name is Giangio. Suffering I'm from the know. petrification I'm disease, Giangio is searching for the fabled gold coin fruit, which he believes to be a cure. In return for our help, he offers a cube and a recovery with stone in advance. The gold coin fruit might just be a myth. Can you let me know if you find it? I'll give you this by way of payment. The cube is a reusable item that provides different effects based on the wish stone inserted, though each wish stone is consumed upon use. After speaking with him, check behind the headless angel statue for a baffled break cartridge behind it. You will rise up and look after the land of God. When the angel spreads its wings and embraces the saint, and the cold is forgotten. Then backtrack to the chapel and proceed through the grand doors opposite the altar to reach the Bridge of Atonement. This is what I imagine Blasphemous looks, looks like in a 3D perspective. On the bridge, watch as carcasses and puppets clash. Deal with the carcasses, then gather the items on the ground before facing the elite carcass. Like other powerful foes, this enemy can use fury attacks and its final decay infused horizontal strike is especially deadly. Damn, this guy is aggressive! Once the elite carcass is defeated, gather the Dim Ergo Fragment in the bridge's center and head toward the cathedral entrance, where an attribute purification ampule is tucked away on the left. 
Finally, enter St. Frangelico Cathedral and activate the Stargazer. After exiting the Stargazer, we follow a trail of blood on the ground leading to the cathedral's altar. You who have sinned, repent with your tears. Only those who have cleansed their souls may move forward. Follow the trail further into the cathedral. As you enter the doorway, you spot a disturbing creature. Check near the organ for the stained core sheet music before following the creature further down into a hole, descending to a darker part of the cathedral. Before going further, look to the left to grab a vivid ergo fragment sitting in a cubi. Across from this spot is a ladder leading further down. Take it to reach the lower area. At the bottom, the path opens up into a tall room with a murky decayed water in the center that inflicts decay if we linger in it. You can rush across to the other side to avoid damage if three carcasses emerge from the water to attack. I will use sawtooth wheels to lure the enemies toward me. After taking them down, grab the cat dust near one of the pillars in the decay pool. Before heading up the ladder on the opposite side, I'll take some time to handle a few enemies on the upper platforms first. To lure down the carcass hanging from the ledge, I'll use the sawtoothed wheel. For the bloated carcass above, I'll throw some thermite to eliminate it safely from a distance. If thermite isn't available, no need to worry. We'll tackle plenty more foes without needing throwables shortly. Finally, climb up the ladder to the top. At the top, you'll find a carcass patrolling this corner. Defeat it and then move to the other side. If you haven't dealt with the carcasses from below, be prepared as another carcass will climb up to ambush you. There will be a bloated carcass throwing decay projectiles. I have defeated that one already from below by using thermite. Now climb up the ladder on the far side, breaking the crates in a small alcove to reveal a hole in the floor. Drop down to reach a ledge with a radiant ergo fragment. On the left side, descend another level to find a hidden moonstone, but stay alert as the carcass will climb up nearby for an ambush. Once it's defeated, jump back to the main platform to return to the ladder. Back at the top of the ladder, we spot a bloated carcass across a narrow wooden beam on the opposite platform. Watch for the spinning gear on the way as it can knock you off if mistimed. Once across, we continue to the right where another carcass will climb up the platform trying to ambush us. Further along, we will find one more bloated carcass on the final platform, past another beam. Once the area is clear, pick up the star fragment on the beams to the left. Then descend the ladder near the spinning gear to proceed. Follow the passageway and take a left at the end. Here you'll find a track with electrified boulders rolling down from the ramp on the left. To avoid them, stay close to the track supports on the far side as you move up. At the top, quickly take down the carcass waiting around the corner or let the boulders do the job for you. Climb up to the top where you'll find another carcass. There is a ladder on the other side. However, once we climb it up, there will be a door that we cannot open yet, so ignore it for now.
In the next room up the stairs, you'll encounter two carcasses, one hiding behind some boxes. As you get closer, a bloated carcass is set to break through a wooden door on the opposite side. To handle them, strategically lure the smaller carcasses away from the door and take them down in the far corners to avoid triggering the bloated carcass. Once the smaller ones are dealt with, you can safely approach the door to engage the bloated carcass. Once the room is clear, head upstairs to pick up a dim ergo fragment on the right, then proceed to the top level of the rafters. Wait until a gap appears in the cock's teeth to jump across. Then push the brazier of the ledge. Revealing a hidden staircase. Turn around to spot a carcass hanging from a platform. Knock it down, then walk across the second cock's teeth to reach the opposite side and head left. Climb up the ladder to find a crescent moonstone. Return back down and this time head right to find a legion magazine by the stairs before pulling the lever. This lever reverses the nearby belt, creating a shortcut. Before returning to the stargazer, drop down the ledges on the right to find an alcove with two carcasses. After dealing with them, open the chest containing a legion plug. Instead of returning to the stargazer, Backtrack to the cog with flat teeth where we push down the brazier by riding the belt up. Step onto the cog's teeth and ride it to the other side where you can roll onto a platform leading to a dead end with a chest containing the blind man's double-sided spear. Since we will want to explore the newly revealed staircase in the room previously filled with decay, use the pocket watch to quickly return to the star gazer. Back in the cathedral, head to the room that was once flooded with decay and descend the staircase that's now accessible. Unlock the door and at the far end of this room you will find a chest holding a crafted cryptic vessel. Afterward, take the belt back up to the top level of the rafters. From here, enter the metal gate to continue forward. Upon approaching the cat dust at the back of the room, a mutated carcass will break through the ceiling. These enemies can transform their right arm into either a hammer or a shield during the battle. When the arm is in hammer form, it deals heavy damage, but the attacks are straightforward to block or dodge by moving right. These enemies are weak to fire, so if you aren't using the salamander dagger, consider using a grindstone to apply fire to your weapon. If you are having difficulty, you can climb the ladder on the room's right side and use throwables such as thermites. Yeah, I didn't want to waste my thermite here. It's really a pain in the butt of farming that stuff, so... Defeating this carcass will grant you a quartz. Before leaving, climb the ladder to collect a vivid ergo fragment from the platform. Then exit through the gate. 
Here you'll find the cell on the right with a chest containing a crat supply box. Finally, take the lift to the St. Frangelico Cathedral Library. Upon entering St. Frangelico Cathedral Library, you'll hear someone talking. Head to the left where you'll encounter Cecile. I'm Cecile and I serve the Archbishop. I'm the only one left. She explains she once served the Archbishop and is now the last survivor of the petrification disease. She'll ask us to retrieve the Archbishop's holy mark from his quarters. After talking to Cecile, return to the Stargazer and check the right side of the room to collect a thermite. The large gate ahead can't be opened from this side, so ignore it for now. With the main room fully explored, take the passageway to the left of the main gate. Stay close to the wall to avoid a pressure plate that triggers a dart trap and keep an eye out for strange pods hanging from the ceiling. These pods drop if you pass beneath them, so proceed carefully as you deal with the three carcasses in the area. Ignore the holes in the floor for now and grab the attribute resistance ampule in the back corner. Then head upstairs to face another carcass. If you haven't dealt with a bloated carcass by using a thermite, you might find it here on the bridge. Once the enemies are cleared, pick up the fable catalyst on the other side of the walkway, then drop back down to the area below. We will now fall through one of the floor holes, taking care to avoid landing on any square pressure plates and they trigger an arrow barrage immediately upon impact. Once safely below, head to the area between the pillars to summon a dimensional butterfly. This butterfly will drop an advanced crank when defeated. It can teleport around the room but won't disappear completely, so keep an eye out for its reappearance to track it down and finish it off. Before leaving, open the chest containing a legion caliber. Use the nearby ladder to return to the previous level. This place is cursed. It is the abyss of hell. You cannot leave. The only thing waiting for you is despair. They call it the arm of God, you arrogant ones. You have called the wrath of God upon yourselves. You'll find the radiant ergo fragment near the locked gate. Unlock the gate, head upstairs again and cross to where the bloated carcass was. Then go down the stairs on the right to reach the next area. Straight ahead, pick up a crescent moonstone. This is why the cathedral was built and remembered. Pilgrims worship the merciful angel. Turn around and lure two carcasses onto dry land to avoid decay buildup. Once you've dealt with them, burn to the next room. You can veer left to reach a staircase. I decided to run atop some debris which wasn't the smartest decision. Deal with the carcasses here and once the decay wears off, collect a vivid ergo fragment. Continuing from the stairs, you'll encounter an elite carcass similar to the one on the Bridge of Atonement. Oh no, I hate these things. No! Jeez. 
Jesus Christ, I hate these things. Gosh, I hate these things. <laughs> I hate these things. Oh my god. After defeating it, take the lift up. On the cathedral's rooftop, you will meet Alidoro, a treasure hunter seeking a safe haven from the puppet frenzy. He will ask you if you know any safe spots. You can tell him the truth or lie, which will grant you an extra humanity. Regardless of your response, Alidoro will give you a fire abrasive and offer his shop services, allowing us to exchange rare boss ergo for unique weapons or amulets. Consider this an act of charity. A thank you gift. Take it. I will exchange the Scrapped Watchman's Broken Heroes Ergo for the Extreme Modification Amulet, then take the lift back down to continue. Once we're back down, take the stairs on the left. Deal with the carcass that ambushes from the right at the landing. Then pick up the Vivid Ergo Fragment nearby. Go up the next set of stairs and break through the crates to the right to drop onto a balcony with the Gemini's emergency protection. Loop back around to the main area and proceed across to the other side to find the Archbishop's diary on the right. Proceed across to the other side, ignoring the path on the left for now. You will find the Archbishop's diary on the altar. However, before picking it up, deal with the carcass rushing towards you from the left to avoid getting shred into tiny pieces. After collecting the diary, head through the doorway with the two angel statues on either side. Watch out for the pots on the ceiling, then approach the Archbishop's Holy Mark to collect it and open the safe for the Workshop Union Strengthening Frame. Finally, head back and enter the archway we ignored earlier. We will find a special resistance ampule under a pod. Make sure to clear the area of it before picking up the ampule. Then, Head towards the center of the area to put the brazier of the edge to clear the decay below. Turn around to spot an opening in the wall. Path through it to pick up a fable catalyst. Do not drop down here, even if it's tempting. Return to where we pushed the brazier off the edge and look towards your left. You will spot a ladder. Descend it and grab the resplendent ergo fragment from an altar before sabotaging the gate's chain to create a shortcut back to Cecile and our stargazer. Deliver the Archbishop's Holy Mark in exchange for an attribute oh, resistance you. ampule. Archbishop's holy mark renews my spirit. Finally, I'll head back to Hotel Krat to give Polendina the supply this box we found box earlier. Officially approved by the city of Krat. Unlocking a quartz in his shop. With that quartz, I'll unlock some perks at my pea organs. Then level up and upgrade my weapon. After preparing, I return to finally confront the area boss. In the first phase, the Archbishop will move towards you, using heavy claw strikes in close range. His claw attacks often come in quick succession, 
typically in three swipe combos. We prepare to block or dodge to either side as his wide reach makes dodging backward less reliable unless you're already positioned at a distance. Take care to avoid his tongue whips as these can cause decay, reducing your weapon's durability. For this phase, a patient approach is most effective. Waiting for larger attacks like lunges or body slams will grant you more time to execute a combo or a charge attack. And these moves leave him exposed longer before his next action. In phase 2, the Archbishop's true form emerges from the original figure, now positioning his back as his new front, granting him extended reach and a new set of attacks. During this phase, focus on circling around to his rear, as this positioning encourages him to use the familiar moves from phase 1. This approach allows you to avoid the more complex strikes from his staff wielding side, making the encounter more manageable. The Archbishop is a carcass type enemy, imbuing your weapon with fire or utilizing the Salamander Dagger or the Flamberg Legion Arm can be advantageous if these fire infused attacks are highly effective against him. The choice of weapon is yours, but these options can make a substantial impact in this encounter. At around half health, he will initiate a blue laser attack. When this begins, move beneath him, then quickly dash to create distance as soon as the laser stops, as he will likely follow it with a powerful radial blast that can be lethal if not avoided. Once the Archbishop is defeated and the cutscene has played, we return to Hotel Krat, speaking with Sophia about the events at the cathedral. She expresses concern about the Malum district below. Next, we head upstairs to speak with the Geppetto, discussing the origins of the strange mutations encountered in St. Frangelico Cathedral. We then head back downstairs to speak with Venini regarding his investigations into the puppet frenzy, receiving the Ergo Wavelength Decoder. I call it the Ergo Wavelength Decoder. Engaging him again allows us to learn more about the cryptic vessel found in the cathedral. By handing over the crafted cryptic vessel, Vignini deciphers it for us, providing the crafted cryptic vessel description. Our next stop is the Alchemist Bridge, where we locate the puppet hanging from the bridge marked with the Purge Puppet sign. Using a throwable, such as a sawtooth wheel, we target the puppet to retrieve a letter with an address. We make our way to the house on Alison Boulevard where we exit onto the balcony, cut the plank and find apartment 221B. Where a safe hold the owl doctors hunting a prowl and a quartz. 
Now we shift our focus to Alidoro. If you previously directed Alidoro to Vignini works by lying, then we will find him in the room at the top of the stairs near the Union Workshop entrance stargazer. Can't say I'm happy to see you though. <clears throat> Sorry, I let my frustration get the better of me. Despite his frustration at being sent to a puppet-filled area, he offers us a chance to suggest a safer place. You've insulted me to the core. I'll never forgive you. But perhaps there's a shred of... You can tell him the truth, so which is Hotel Krat, or to lie to him and say Elysium Boulevard, which will give you an additional humanity boost. If you choose to lie again, Elidara will call you out, but he'll head to Hotel Krat regardless. The puppets have already destroyed that place. <sighs> again, you spurn my trust. But even a brave soul like me cannot afford another enemy in times like these. With Alidoro now at Hotel Krat. Oh, it's you. This hotel is indeed a refuge from the dangers of the outside world. I am the Hound. A descendant of the city's most aristocratic families. Repaying debts is what we nobles do. We speak with Eugenie about the Hunt, learning that he once saved her life. Talking to her again reveals more about her past, including the hardships of her childhood. The man who saved your life. I'm so glad that someone so kind has reached safety. And speaking of safety, please take care of yourself out there. Before we move to our next destination, we need to return to the library of St. Frangelico Cathedral to find Cecile's written confession and the divine service record in her place. After reading the confession, we obtained the prayed gesture. With this, we head to the chapel across the Bridge of Atonement. At the one-winged angel statue, we can use the prayed gesture to increase our humanity once more. Finally, we fast travel back to the Archbishop's Altar. It's time to descend into the Malum District, a perilous area reigned by the Black Rabbit Brotherhood. So stay tuned for what lies ahead in the next episode.